Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Johnson back again with another Bible story and another part of Paul's letter to the Ephesian church. So, last week we heard that Paul had a special job to do, just like we found out we had special jobs the week before. So today we're going to hear a little prayer that he prays after he told us about his special job. So let me undo the string on his letter. Get it all ready for us. Open it up. And here is the little prayer that he says. And remember, it's Paul talking, even though you're hearing my voice. So I, Paul, ask God to make you strong on the inside so that you believe who Jesus is, what he did for us, and how much he loves us. Thank you, God, that you can do such amazing, wonderful things for us. Amen. What a beautiful prayer, boys and girls. Paul is asking God that we will be strong on the inside. And I told you once before that sometimes when we hear the word strong, we think of strong muscles. But you can be strong on the inside, too. Someone who's not strong on the inside kind of hunches over and thinks, I'm not very important, um, nobody really cares about me. That person doesn't feel strong on the inside. But when they find out that Jesus loves them, they can stand tall now. They are someone that God loves, the God who made the whole world. God loves me. I can stand up tall. I know in my head that Jesus died for me. He rose again. He wants to take away my dirty sin spots. And when he does that, they are gone away. I am forgiven. I can stand up. I am now someone who is strong on the inside because I know who Jesus is. I know what he did. And I know that he loves me. Oh, he loves me more than anybody. So, today I have two stories for you. One from the Bible, from Bible Times, about an amazing, wonderful thing that God did to show his church how much he loved them. And the second story is a story about when we were in Africa. Again, a time when God showed how much he loved his church by doing something amazingly wonderful for them. So come with me to the pictures. In this first picture, boys and girls, you can see Peter in his dark blue robe. You can see King Herod right here. And he has had Peter arrested. That means he sent the guards out to catch Peter and bring him to the prison. King Herod does not want Peter to be talking about Jesus. King Herod does not love Jesus at all. But Peter does, and Peter has been telling people how much Jesus loves them, how he died for them and then rose again and wants to take away their dirty sin spots and have them be part of God's family. But King Herod does not believe that, and he does not want Peter to tell anyone else. So he brings Peter to the prison. Now, when that happens, People in the Peter's church get together at a friend's house and they decide to pray. And they ask God to please take good care of Peter, to let him go, to help him to be safe. And they're praying that because one of Peter's friends was taken to the prison before Peter went and that other man was killed. Herod did not like the other man either, so he had him killed. So the church is praying, asking God to take special care of Peter, but somehow to let him out and keep him safe. Meanwhile, in the prison, Peter has fallen asleep between two of the guards. Suddenly, there's a light in the room and he sees one of God's messenger angels, a special, special angel come to help Peter. And you look at Peter, see he's chained to the guard. It looks like big metal bracelets. The guard has one, 
and Peter has one, and there's a chain in between. So Peter can't get up and walk away because the guard would have to come too. Even his other hand, it's hard to see because of the angel's hand here, but this hand has a chain bracelet too, and it's fastened to the other guard on the other side. The guards are still asleep, but Peter is now awake. And the angel says to him, Peter, get up. Make sure you have your, your cloak wrapped around you and your sandals on and come with me. Peter is so surprised. How can he escape when he's chained to the guards? But he does what the angel says. He stands up, and when he stands up, look at his hand. Look what happened. Is he still wearing that big metal bracelet and chain? No. Look back here where the guard is. It opened up all by itself and fell off of Peter. So now he doesn't have to stay with the guards anymore. The guards are still asleep, but Peter is following the angel. They hurry through the prison, and when they get to the point place, where the big metal door that opens up into the streets of the city, the door is not shut. There's where Peter used to be. Look in front of him. Is this a closed door? No, this is an open space. That door opened all by itself. The angel did not have a key. Peter did not have a key. And the guards certainly did not want Peter to leave, so they were not opening the doors. That big metal gate opened all by itself. <clears throat> when Peter got outside in the streets, the angel left him, probably to go back to God and do something else that God wanted the angel to do. Then Peter realized where he was, and he hurried to his friend's house, where the people were praying inside. He knocked on the door and a young woman came out and when Peter talked to her and she heard his voice, she was so happy and so glad and so excited that she ran back inside the house to tell everyone else. But she forgot to open the door, so Peter is still outside the, the gate to that yard. She runs inside and says, I, Peter is here, I've just heard his voice. He's outside at the gate. And the people know that Peter is in the prison, so they say, no, no, you must be crazy. Peter's in the prison. No, no, she says, he's at the gate. I recognized his voice. No one inside believes her, so they all hurry to the gate too to see for themselves. And when they get there, who do they find? Peter. Peter who has been rescued by God. God has answered this church's prayer. Remember, because they love Peter, they were talking to God and asking him to take care of Peter and somehow let him go. And because they all love Jesus, Jesus is listening, listening to their prayer. And this time, when they pray, God loves them very, very much, and he gives them a special answer, a yes. Peter is now out of the prison, not chained up anymore, and now he, goes to a, he can go to another town where he can talk about Jesus and not get arrested again. Oh, what a beautiful answer to prayer. What a special way for God to show that he loved that little church. For the second story, boys and girls, I just need to tell you a little bit about where we were in Africa. Uh, the church in Africa, as, as it is here, is the people. And they do have church buildings, just like we have a church building. Their buildings are smaller than ours, and they tend to be spread out. Just maybe there's a town over here, and they have a church. And then there's a town over here, and they have a church because it's too far to walk very often on a Sunday morning from one church to another. So the churches are smaller than ours and they don't look like ours because they can only build their churches with what they have. 
Some are made of mud blocks that are dried mud, like a, feels like a rock. And some are made of pieces of wood with grass for the roof. And the situation in Africa is that there are lots of people there who don't love Jesus. And they don't like the people who do love Jesus. And sometimes there are arguments that happen. So come with me to the story pictures and I will tell you the story about the problem that happened to the church in Africa while we were there. Come with me. I'm going to start by showing you two pictures of some of the church buildings that were in our part of Africa, boys and girls. Here is the one that was made with the hard dried mud blocks. They would take the mud and shape it into blocks and then leave it out in the hot sun. And it was very hot sun in Africa. And they would let them get nice and dry and hard till it felt like stone or brick. And then they would stack them up, they'd start on the ground, put some on the ground, and then they'd put some more, and then some more, and they'd do it on all the sides. And they would just build it up higher and higher and higher until then they could lay some big tree branches across the top and then they could put the top of the building on the roof and that way the sun would not be on their heads and it would keep most of the rain out when it rained so that was the mud block church building here's one made out of pieces of wood you can see in the front these great big tall long branches from trees. It's more on the side here and in the corners. And that's what they would use to hold the building up and make the frame of it. Then they would take smaller pieces of wood and put them across the sides. Sometimes they would weave them in and out. And sometimes they would tie them into place or use nails and a hammer if they had that. Not everyone had it. And then they would put the top on, the, the roof, which was made of grass. Here you can see some of this pretty gold-colored grass hanging down. And they would spread that all over the top, all over the top. And again, it would keep the sun off their heads if it was a bright, sunny day. And it would keep some of the rain out if it was a rainy day. They would have a lot of drips inside and they would take some of these long, tall tree branches to hold the roof up so that the, wet, the grass, when it did get wet, wouldn't fall down in on top of them. So those were what two of the churches looked like, the buildings. And just like our churches, the building does not do anything, doesn't pray for people, it doesn't share food and money with people. It's the people inside who do that. And the people inside these buildings love Jesus very, very much. I told you that there were some people who did not love Jesus. They decided, they got very, very angry at one point, and they decided that they were going to come and smash down the walls and burn the churches that they could burn. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're going to try to smash and burn the church buildings. How sad. Then the people won't have an, a place to go where they can have their services, where they pray to God and sing to him and thank him for the good things that he's done and ask them for help with their problems, just like we do. We would need soldiers to come and protect those buildings. Here is a picture of the African soldiers that were in our spot where we lived. This isn't all of them. They wouldn't all fit in the picture. But here's some of them. You can see that they are marching. They have their guns with them. They are ready to fight. They are all ready to do whatever needs to be done to keep people safe. But you know what? These soldiers weren't working. Not at all. The people who were supposed to pay them for doing their soldier work had not paid them in lots and lots and lots of days. So they had no money. So they said, we are not going to work. So I'll just take that out of the way. 
there were no soldiers left to protect those buildings. Oh no, what to do? Mr. Johnson and the other missionaries and their African helpers decided that what they needed to do was pray. Only God was going to be able to help with this big problem. So they did. They got together and prayed. Here you see one of the African men praying, one of the missionaries back here, some other African people here. They were in the room, just like Peter's friends gathered in that room to pray for him when he was in the prison. And these people right here, they prayed and prayed and prayed until all of a sudden they said, we can stop praying now. We have told God what we're concerned about. We know that he loves us. We know that he hears us when we pray. So we can stop now and just wait and see what God is going to do. So they did that because they had heard about the problem with people wanting to ruin the churches. So they went home that night and the next day at night was when the people, the angry people, were supposed to go and smash and burn the churches. You know what? They never did. Because all of a sudden, the soldiers said, we are back to work. We are coming back to work. We have heard about the angry people wanting to ruin the church buildings, and we are not going to let that happen. We are here to protect those buildings, so nobody better come because we will chase them away if they do. And you know what happened, boys and girls? Nobody came. Nobody came to burn or smash the church buildings because the soldiers were there and they made sure there were some soldiers all around the churches to chase away anybody who wanted to ruin the buildings and smash them or burn them. Oh, what a wonderful way God answered the missionary's prayer. Everyone who prayed that day knew that God had protected the church buildings for their friends. And what a wonderful answer from the God who loves his church to the people who prayed to the God who loves them. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God, that you love us not just as individual people, but you love us as a church. Thank you that you want to hear us when we have problems. You want us to talk to you and you love to answer our prayers with a big yes, if it's the right thing. Thank you, God. Amen. Let's look at our Bible words again, boys and girls. We started saying them together last week. Let's do it again this week. I'll say it, and then you say it after me, all right? In him, your turn, in him, my turn, you also, you also are being built, are being built together, together. And that's found in Ephesians 2, 22. Do you think you can say it bigger chunks of it together with me? Let's try it. I'll start first. In him you also. Your turn. In him you also. My turn. Are being built together. Your turn. Are being built together. Ephesians 2, 22. Very good. Now, boys and girls, do you think you can do it all together? Let me go first, and then you do it. Here we go. In him, you also are being built together. Whoa, that's a lot. Can you do that? Do it with me. In him, you also are being built together. And where is it found? 
Ephesians 2.22. Remember the two twos right next to each other. It means 22. You might not know that number yet, but you'll get there pretty soon. All right. Now, let's see. How about if we say it really loud together? Ready? Together. In him, you also are being built together. Ephesians 2.22. Oh, that was pretty loud. All right, now let's do it whispering in a very soft whisper. Can you whisper with me? In him, you also are being built together. Ephesians 2.22. Whoa, that was very quiet, boys and girls. You know what whispering means. All right, let's try it very fast together. Ready? And this will be fast. In him you also are being built together. Ephesians 2.22. Oh, I couldn't even get my finger going that fast. Now let's try it slowly together. In him you also are being built together. Ephesians 2.22. That was pretty slow, wasn't it? All right, now let's do it regular. Just regular together all at once. In him you also are being built together. Ephesians 2.22. Very good, boys and girls. And we'll say this again in other lessons as we go forward. But remember, we are being built together in Jesus because we are God's church. He doesn't love just you or just me or just Mr. Johnson, or just your family. He loves everyone who loves him. And we are all adopted into his family. Remember, if we are a church, we are sinners saved by grace. Do you remember the lady who had done all the naughty things and Jesus said, I forgive you because she loved him? Or how about Peter? Do you remember what Peter said the night before Jesus died? After the soldiers took Jesus to the prison? Remember Peter was telling lies. He was not telling the truth. I don't know that man, Jesus. I don't know him, he said. Oh, how sad that was. But then after Jesus rose again and came back to life, he asked Peter, do you love me, Peter? And Peter said, yes, Jesus, I love you. And Jesus forgave him and said, Peter, I want you to be one of the leaders in my church. I want you to love my people who love me. I want you to teach them about how I want them to live. Peter was forgiven. Saved by grace. Up, That means it was a present. Peter didn't say, well, now you have to forgive me, Jesus. Oh, no, it doesn't work that way. Jesus said, Peter, I forgive you. That was a present to Peter from Jesus. God is building us together to be people who love each other, who welcome each other. Doesn't matter what we look like or where we come from or how much money we do or don't have. Jesus loves us as a church, and we as a church should love anyone else who loves Jesus. After all, we are a church who is loved by God. Remember? Here's Peter in the prison, <gasps> chained to those guards. But who comes? God sends an angel, and the angel takes him out. The chains are left behind. Only God could help Peter get out of prison like that. And he did it because he loved that little church that was praying for him. And our job as a church, here's a picture of our church again. Remember, our job as a church is to show the world how much God loves them. Just like in our song, if we're God's church, we are sinners saved, 
sinners saved by grace, Jesus present to us. If we're God's church, we're a people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world that we are his family. Let's go and sing that now, boys and girls. If we're God's church, we are sinners saved by grace. If we're God's church, we are people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world we are his family. Jesus died to take away our sin. He rose again and he wants to be our friend. He makes us wise so we can live for him. We're adopted into his family. <clears throat> All right, now let's bring the camera closer so you can watch my mouth. If we're God's church, we are sinners saved by grace. If we're God's church, we are people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world we are his family. Jesus died to take away our sin. He rose again and he wants to be our friend. He makes us wise so we can live for him. We're adopted into his family. Let's add in the clapping on this one. If we're God's church, we are sinners saved by grace. If we're God's church, we are people, not a place. If we're God's church, we are loved by God. Let's show the world we are his family. Jesus died to take away our sin. He rose again and he wants to be our friend. He makes us wise so we can live for him. We're adopted into his family. I hope you remember this song, boys and girls, and everything else that we've learned this week. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>